In this video, I'm going to show you how to anti-differentiate the cube of the secant function. This is going to involve an integration by parts and also the use of a Pythagorean identity. So we'll use the identity as it relates the square of secant and the square of tangent. So I will point out both of those moments when they happen. Let's start with a round of integration by parts. What we're going to do is look at this expression where we have the secant function cubed. And we want to say, does, does any aspect of that remind us of a derivative? And I think the best that we can do here is to realize that secant squared is the derivative of the tangent function. So let me rewrite this as just secant of x times secant squared like that. Because when you first look at this expression, it's not obvious that there should be an integration by parts computation here. But in this way, we now have the product of two expressions where what we will do is set up integration by parts. We are going to say that u, the function we want to anti-differentiate, is the first one, secant of x. And then dv, because we have a nice derivative here, secant squared is the derivative of tangent, we will say that dv is secant squared x dx so that we can apply integration by parts to this integral as we've now written it. To get down to the next line, we will need to know that du is secant tangent, kind of running over my chart here, but off to the right, b is just tangent. All right. With this integration by parts decomposition, we can now say that this right-hand side is going to be u times v, so that's secant times tangent. Minus the integral of tan x times secant x tan x dx. So we will do uh, this times that becomes the, the integral that we need to, to compute. We have two copies of tan here. So what I'm going to do is write tan squared so the tangent function squared secant x dx. Okay. We've done the only integration by parts that we're going to need to do in this computation. The rest of it is going to come down to a Pythagorean identity. So take a moment, you can pause this. Where we have the square of the tangent function, replace that appropriately with an expression that should involve some ones and secants. And we, I'll come back in just a second. The Pythagorean identity that relates tangent and secant is that one plus tangent squared is secant squared. So tangent squared is secant squared minus one. Um, let me actually write that here because on the next line, I'm going to bring that in and split this up into two integrals at the same time. So just to make it clear what's happening, this first expression is going to be get, get replaced with the square of the secant function minus one. All right. So down to the next line, we have secant tangent and then I am going to distribute this secant of x into this expression. So this whole thing is secant squared x minus 1 times secant. And then I'm also, I'm going to end up with two separate terms separated by the subtraction in the integrand here. I'm going to break this apart and distribute the negative. Okay. So the first part is going to be minus the antiderivative of secant cubed. And then the second part is going to be minus negative one times secant, so overall plus secant. Perfect. We are actually almost done. You might look at this and think we cannot anti-differentiate this middle expression because literally that's what we don't know when we're working through this computation. However, if you look back at the left-hand side, we have the antiderivative of the secant function cubed. And then here I see that again, but on the right-hand side, we have this leading negative in front of this term, which means that if I collect both of those expressions on the same side of the equation, what we're going to do is move this over and pick up two copies of what we're trying to find on the left. We're basically going to solve for it like it's an a variable, an equation. So I'll move that over. I'll do that right now. 
and then we've already got secant x tangent x, that's fine. We have this expression over here, the antiderivative of secant of x. That's not immediate if you haven't seen that before, but I have a separate video where we, we show that the antiderivative of secant is the natural log of secant plus tangent. So using that earlier work, we can now say that after bringing this over, two copies of the antiderivatives of the secant function cubed is equal to secant tangent and then anti-differentiating this we get plus natural log of the absolute value of secant function plus the tangent function and then at this point all we have to do is isolate this now sometimes these computations almost feel unsatisfying because it felt like I never actually anti-differentiated this. It's almost like a shortcut or, or a roundabout method to getting to what the antiderivative of this is. I'm, I'm isolating it in an equation, but that's, that's just how we do it. So I'm going to divide by two. So it's a product of secant and tangent divided by two plus a uh, natural log of secant of x plus tangent of x, the absolute value of that rather, divided by two. And then I will add the constant of integration because this was an indefinite integral. So this is how we can anti-differentiate the cube of the secant function.